So what's going on guys, Kate's here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you a day one guide on how to survive in Sons of the Forest. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Ok so then let's get started. The first step I always did in the old forest and now in the Sons of the Forest is to stay very close to the crash site location. Some of my friends argued against this, saying that the cannibals will come to this location, but to be honest, they're going to come anyways, no matter where you choose to spend your first few minutes or hours of the beginning. So then, when you get to a certain stage of the game, one of the most useful things about being close to the crash site is actually the reason why I do it, and it is because it respawns a lot of useful items and just general stuff. This crash site won't give you the best food or the best items, but it's certainly very handy, especially at the start. And of course, this goes without saying, but at the start you wanna fully clean out the full crash site. So collect every single piece of item like food, weapons, sticks and anything that you can find. So then as for the second tip, I always say to people not to be fooled and not to feel a sense of security, no matter on what type of difficulty you're playing the game on, because usually most players play on the medium difficulty, and that's probably where you're gonna start. On the normal setting it's quite in the beginning, but once you get enough building done, the cannibals will start coming, and when they do, it's pretty common to see cannibals every day, so you will need your defenses up as soon as possible. So then, if you are talking about building your first base, stone walls are definitely the way to go. The same as in the first forest game, you will find many creatures. Some will be not that smart, but as well you will meet enemies that will charge in your base, and the basic wooden walls won't stop them for long. So I usually put stone walls up around the platforms and most other common places where I see them getting destroyed. Of course, at the start players will build around their base wooden walls, but I strongly recommend you before going on big adventures to build stone walls, and perhaps you don't have to build the whole base with stone walls. But like I said, only the most common spots that the enemies keep on destroying. Then as well, if you're playing solo, it is easy to build a small base with few walls. But then if you're playing with group of friends, I strongly recommend you to still build your first base very small and very close to the crash site as well. And then later, when you have gathered enough materials, then you first of all need to find the best spot and then only then build a huge base. And yes, this is another great tip, no matter when you decide to build your base, don't make your first base very big, because it will require a lot of materials to gather, and you don't know if you still will want to be living in the same location after a day or two. So just make your first base small, and gather just enough materials to survive day by day, and then when you have enough food and decent starting gear, then go exploring, and find an actually good place to build your huge base. Remember that the Sons of the Forest map is about 4 times bigger than the first game, so if you don't want to be running kilometers back and forth every time you need something, then at the start just chill out for a bit and think about the bigger picture. And by the way, some of the cannibals can climb even trees, and then they can jump down from those trees over the high walls. So remember to chop down most of the closest trees to your base. So then let's move over to the next step. And if you watched any of the trailers or other survival game videos, then it may seem very fun to use a weapon like shotgun and just mow groups of enemies. But in the sounds of the forest your ammunition is actually limited, so the next big thing that you should use is a bow. These pesky cannibals will keep on coming at you almost every day, and bow and arrows are one of the best ways of dealing with them. A good way of making sure that you know where is the best place of supply of arrows is by placing down a marker. You can cycle through and put different colors on the markers, so you roughly can remember what you marked at that location. So then the first time you go exploring the world and when you find a supply of arrows, then mark down the location. And then when you load back in the game, come check this place out again and resupply your arrows. So then while we are talking about using bows and other weapons, it is actually important on where in the body you hit the enemy. So always if you can, aim for the headshots. The cannibals will sometimes move pretty quickly, especially the ones that run around like dogs. But once you have killed them, you can actually pick up the bodies and put them on the fire like this one and burn them. And when you throw the body on fire, it won't be long until that body turns into a pile of bones. And then you want to collect those bones. So for example, like in the forest one, we are able to make bone baskets and other items that will require a bunch of bones. So when you kill your enemies, if you can, don't forget to burn them, and then when their bones break, then collect them, because they will be useful later on. Another really good thing about burning the cannibal bodies is that it gets rid of all the disease in the area, and you could also get skulls out of it, which can be used to make weapons or even skull lamps. 
So then let's talk about traps. And there are many different traps in the game. There is a trap called defense trap, where if you line it up with a fence, then you can get an easy kill. I usually find the cannonballs running along the fence line, so putting traps close to the wall of your base can prove very useful for the extra defense. And of course, don't forget that when a trap gets used, you usually need to reset it, so it can be used again. And all that you do is simply just use one stick. But be careful, because you can take damage if the trap hits you. So basically, just don't forget to reset your trap, because they can be very effective, especially once you put them all around the outskirts of your base. Then as well, you will be able to make another trap that will be more expensive, where besides just few logs and stones, you will need to use a rope as well. Ropes will become more scarce the longer the game goes on, so later on they can be expensive, but they're well worth it. And of course, don't forget to reset them each time they get used. And then lastly, one of the nice things about traps is that they will also act like an alarm. So some of your traps will make a very distinctive noise, and then when they go off you will hear. So then if you weren't necessarily aware of the enemies, then you will know that they're nearby. So in a quick summary, traps are worth it and if you can, then definitely invest your materials into them, because they will give you easy kills, so then you can get free resources from the dead bodies. Then it will work as an alarm as well, and then lastly the traps will provide you with an extra protection. So then let's move over to gathering resources. And for me, my main goal as I run around in the forest is to constantly pick up stones, kill a bunch of animals, take down branches and even twigs. So no matter what is our main goal, we always on our way want to be collecting resources. Unless you just want to spend hours upon hours just purely gathering. But if you're like me, then by doing a bunch of tasks, and then in your way, gathering can prove more efficient and more fun than just purely doing one task. And then another good thing about gathering while doing other tasks is that we have a carry limit. So if you are purely gathering resources, we will still have to go back and forwards. But then if we have other tasks, then on our way back we can empty the bag. And this way we can be more efficient. Then as far as the stones are, I will have stone walls being made all the time in my base. Because once you've collected few stones, that will be all that you can carry. So I usually drop them off at my base wall as I run past them. So I think that this is just a question about being efficient and building your defenses as quickly as possible. Because as I said, cannibals will soon start coming to your base. So that's why we want to be as efficient as possible, gathering everything at all the time so we could be in the best position possible when the enemies come. And to make our efficiency even better, we need to make better bags. So in this game we can use stick bags, pouches and even rug bags. And each one of these bag types will give us ability to carry more of that type of particular resource. Some of these bags will be hard to get. So right at the start, just try to think about your survival. But then when you feel strong and secure enough from all the creatures on the island, then for sure put your time into getting better bags. Some bags will require just a rabbit skin and rope, while others will require a boar skin and much more. So be look out for my next video, because I will make soon a specific video on what is the fastest way to get a good bag. So then for one of the last steps I wanted to talk about our caves and what is the best time to go into them. So in different parts of the map you will find cannibal camps and caves. It is very dangerous place to go but well worth it. In those type of locations you will find plenty of resources and even useful items that will unlock you more parts of the main storyline. So I would highly recommend you to get to those locations but not before you have found some type of lightning device and not before most of your base is with stone walls. So first of all in the caves it will be pitch black, so you will need some light source, so you would be able to see where to go and how to survive. But then besides that in these caves you will find elite monsters, like the mutants, and these creatures are nasty and strong beings. And because you went into those caves, they might retaliate at any point, and they can come to your base and destroy it. So that's why we need stone walls to protect our base, in case of an attack and stone walls specifically, because these creatures can easily destroy wooden walls. And then lastly, another method to save your base is to draw these mutants away from your camp, by not sitting in your base but attacking and running your character to a different location. So in a quick summary, if you want to find very valuable resources and items, and at the same time, if you don't want to lose everything you built, then only go into the caves after finding a light source, and then when your base is fully protected with stone walls. So then let's move over to the last step, and my most favorite thing to do in the forest 1 was to find a high ground and easily shoot enemies down. 
and we can apply the same principle in Sons of the Forest as well, even though the building system doesn't exactly work in the same way. But basically, if you followed my previous steps, and if you're still alive, then sometimes you will find yourself in a bad situation. And to be honest, one of the biggest lifesavers was to use a high ground. And this might seem like a fairly straightforward tip, but it's something that I always hold on to, especially at the start. And when it's dark, it is much more harder to hit headshots and to protect yourself. So usually at night time, I always recommend for players to get on top of a building or any other secure high ground that you can climb and then from that spot you can protect yourself by shooting down all the enemies from a distance. And especially when you're fighting hard enemies, they might be moving very fast. And if you're on the low ground, then you will have to shoot and run. But then if you are on a high ground, which by the way can be anything a bit taller than the monster himself, then you have found yourself a safe spot, from which you can just shoot and be safe at the same time. Usually when I get low HP, or I need to be safe, I just look for the highest thing I can climb. And this one seemingly easy tip has saved my life a lot of times, and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Sounds of the Forest guides that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy, peace.